Well, welcome again to a, another episode of Down to Earth, but Heavenly Minded Podcast. I'm your host, Irv Risch. And uh, the last time we got together, we uh, took a look at uh, Hebrews chapter 6, and we were going to take a closer look uh, at the uh, order of Melchizedek that was mentioned right at the end of the chapter, and it has been mentioned before. And chapter 7 kind of gets a little bit more into it. Uh, so with that said, uh, our study today is going to be really uh, on the priestly order of Melchizedek that's found in the book of Hebrews. And uh, I did some research and I did some looking around on the web and I found something that was really good and I'd like to try to share it with you uh, going along with our study. Uh, but maybe we should do is just read through that uh, chapter, uh, chapter 7, before we get going here. Uh, so here's our chapter, chapter 7, the priestly order of Melchizedek. For this Melchizedek, king of Salem, priest of the Most High God, and uh, Abraham, met Abraham returning from the slaughter of the king's and blessed him, and to Abraham appointed a tenth part of everything. Uh, he is uh, first, by translation uh, of his name, the king of righteousness, and then is also the king of Salem, which is the king of peace. So we have the king of righteousness and the king of peace. He is without father or mother or genealogy. It doesn't mean that he didn't have one. He just didn't have one recorded. Having neither beginning of days nor end of life. So nothing is said of his birth or his death. But uh, resembles the Son of God. He continues a priest forever. He is... Uh, Kind of a picture of our Lord Jesus Christ, uh, we can put it that way, but his priesthood uh, consists of a eternal priesthood. Now see how great a man was to whom Abraham, the patriarch, gave a tenth of his spoils, and those descendant of Levite who received the priestly office after a commandment in the law to take uh, tithes from the people, that is, from their brothers, though these also are descendants of Abraham, the Levites are. But this man, who does not have his descendants from them, receives tithes from Abraham, and blessed him, who had the promise, uh, promises. It is beyond dispute that the inferior is blessed by the superior, and that the one case uh, ties are received by mortal men, but in the other case by one of whom it is testified that he lives. One might even say that Levi uh, himself, who received ties, paid ties to Abraham, for he was still in the loins of his ancestor when Melchizedek met him. So in other words, uh, the Levites actually gave tithes to him because through their father Abraham. Now Jesus compared to Melchizedek, and now this is very important right here. Now, if perfection had been obtained through the Leviticus priesthood, for under the people had received the law, what further need would there have been for another priest to arise after the order of Melchizedek, rather than one named after the order of Aaron? For when there is a change in the priesthood, there is a necessity, a change in the law as well. For the one of whom these things are spoken belong to another tribe, from which no one has ever served at the altar for it is evident that our lord that our lord was descended from judah and in connection with the tribe of moses 
said nothing about priests. This become, becomes even more evident when another priest arises in the likeness of Melchizedek, who has become a priest, not on the basis of legal requirements uh, concerning bodily descent, but the power of an indestructible life, for it is witness of him. You are a priest forever after the order of Melchizedek. And I think we have seen that before. Okay, for on the one hand, the former uh, uh, commandment is set aside because it is, weak, it is weakness, unless for the law made nothing perfect. But on the other hand, a better hope is introduced through which we draw near to God. And it is not without an oath, for those who formerly became priests were made such without an oath. But this one was made a priest with an oath by the one who said to him, The Lord has swore and will not change his mind, you are a priest forever. This make, makes Jesus the guarantor of a better covenant. The former priests were many in number because they were uh, uh, prevented by death from continuing in office, but he holds his priesthood permanently because he continues forever. Consequently, he is able to save to the uttermost those who draw near to God through him, since he always lives and makes intercession for him. For it was indeed fitting that we should have such a high priest, holy, innocent, unstained, separated uh, from sinners, and exalted above the heavens. He had no need, like those high priests, to offer sacrifices daily, uh, first for his own sins and then for those of the people, since he did not, since he did this once for all, when he offered up himself. For the law uh, appoints men to their weakness as high priest, but the word of the oath, which came later, then the law appoints a son who has been made perfect forever. Wow, this is really, really a good chapter. And I'd like to uh, jump into an article that I read uh, and it's on the order of Aaron and the order of Melchizedek. It kind of looks at both priesthood. And uh, I think it's very important that we look at both of them. In the Bible, there are two division orders, if you'd like to say it that way, of priesthood. The order of Aaron and the order of uh, Melchizedek. So we have the two, two priesthoods. Okay, let's look at uh, number one, the first one, the order of Aaron. The order of Aaron is a uh, priestly uh, division in which the priests conduct sacrifices according to the law and the regulations of the Old Covenant. Aaron, a Levite, so the order of Aaron is also called uh, the Levitical priesthood, the order of the Levites. Abraham was the father of Isaac, and Isaac the father of Jacob, and Jacob the father of the twelve sons including Levite, who was the third son of Jacob, his wife, Leah. Uh, Jacob uh, and his family moved to Egypt, where his son Joseph became a ruler in Egypt, and then left Egypt after 430 years. Millions of Jacob's descendants headed to Canaan, followed by the leader Moses, well, after crossing the Red Sea, uh, the Leave, uh, or the Israelites entered uh, the desert where Moses received the Ten Commandments on Mount Sinai. They built the tabernacle to keep the Ten Commandments in at that time. But Aaron, the order, the older brother of Moses, was the high priest uh, who um, main duties. Uh, was to offer sacrifices to God in the tabernacle uh, and 
the uh, entire tribe of Levi, which Moses and Aaron belonged to, was called to serve in the temple. And we see, we get all this right from the Old Testament too. If we wish to read the scriptures, this is what we would find out. When the Levites, uh, Levitical priests, offered sacrifices to God for the people's sin, they slaughtered a lamb or a goat uh, over a period of about uh, 1,500 years from the time of Aaron until the time of Jesus established the new covenant. All the descendants of Levite, the tribe of Levite, continued to serve as priests according to the order of Aaron in their earthly sanctuary. Okay, that kind of gives us a rundown on uh, the uh, order of uh, Aaron in that priesthood. Now let's look at the order of Melchizedek. Besides the order of Aaron, there was also uh, references to uh, the order of Melchizedek. In the Bible, Christ is described as the high priest in the order of Melchizedek. And we read in Hebrews 6, we already read this in verses 19 through 20. Uh, it entered, it enters the inner sanctuary behind the curtain where Jesus, who went before us, has entered on our behalf. He has become a high priest forever after the order of Melchizedek. And we read that scripture in uh, one of our podcasts before. Now let us study Melchizedek first. Melchizedek was a person who lived during the time of Abraham, about 2,000 years before Jesus came to the earth. He represents Christ. Melchizedek is mentioned in only two places in the Old Testament. Uh, he is uh, just described as king of Salem, uh, who lived at the time of Abraham, and there are no exact records of how he became a priest or where Salem was located. The mystery figure, Melchizedek, brought out bread and wine. This is real important. He brought out bread and wine to bless Abraham as he was returning from the battle where he had defeated the kings and the armies to rescue his nephew Lot. The Bible calls this Melchizedek priest of the Most High God, or of the God Most High, is the way it's worded. And we read in Genesis 14, verses 17 through 20, after, Abraham, after Abram returned from defeating Kandoralum, or the king of uh, the king's alien allies with him, the Mel, uh, then Melchizedek, king of Salem, brought out bread and wine. He was a priest of God Most High, and he blessed Abraham, saying, Blessed be Abraham, the God of Most High, creator of heaven and earth. And blessed be God, Most High, who delivered your enemies into your hands. And Abraham gave him a tenth of everything. And that's out of the King James Version, by the way. Uh, in the time of Abraham, animal sacrifices were offered to God according to the traditions of Abram, or Abel's sacrifice. Uh, however, Melchizedek offers a sacrifice of bread and wine to God. See, I told you this was a little different. And uh, the Apostle Paul explains a lot about Melchizedek. His, he descended, he describes Mel, uh, Melchizedek as the king of righteousness and the king of peace, saying that uh, like the son of God, he remains a priest forever. He also wrote in detail that the Levites and the Levite uh, himself the father of the tribe of Levite, uh, who, who uh, would call a tenth of each of the 12 tribes of Israel to be paid a tenth to Melchizedek through Abraham, and that Christ became a priest in that order of Melchizedek with an oath from God, while the other is an earthly sanctuary because priest without an oath. And we see that in Hebrews 7, uh, verses 1 through 28, which we just read. 
Now Christ, who follows the order of Melchizedek, about 1,100 years before Jesus came to the earth, David, being moved by the Holy Spirit, prophesied that the Lord Jesus Christ would come and serve as a high priest in the order of Melchizedek. And we read in Psalms 110, verses 1 through 4, The Lord said to my Lord, Sit here at my right hand until I make your enemies a footstool for your feet. The Lord will extend your mighty scepter from Zion. Uh, the Lord has sworn and will not change his mind. You are a priest forever after the order of Melchizedek. Jesus interprets the Lord who David mentioned in the book of Psalms as Christ. While the Pharisees were gathered together, Jesus asked them, What do you think about the Christ? Whose son is he? The son of David? Then they replied uh, and said to them, How is it that David speaks by the Spirit calls him Lord? For he said, The Lord said to my Lord, Sit here at my right hand until I make your enemies your enemies under your feet. If then David called him Lord, how can he be his son? Wow, that was really something to ask him. David's prophecy, or prophesied that Christ would be a high priest in the order of Melchizedek. And the Lord God, Jehovah, promised with an oath that he would uh, surely fulfill it. Just as Melchizedek blessed Abraham through, through bread and wine, Jesus blesses human beings through bread and wine at the Passover. Isn't that something? We read about the first Passover in the upper room before Jesus uh, was betrayed and suffered and died. So the disciples did as Jesus had uh, directed them and prepared the Passover. While they were eating, Jesus took bread and gave thanks and broke it and gave to the disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body. Then they took the cup, the wine, and drank it, drank from it, all of you, or drink from all, and drink from it, all of you. This is my blood in the new covenant, which I pour out for many for the forgiveness of sins. We read that in Matthew 26, verses 17 through 28. Well, why did God raise another priest from a different order, the order of Melchizedek, instead of the order of Aaron, which had been handed down over a period of 1,500 years? As aforementioned, the sacrifice, sacrifices offered according to the order of Aaron were copies and shadows of Christ would establish later for the order of Aaron the Leviticus priesthood, could not forgive sins. You know, just some sacrifices could not forgive sins. It had to be the one and only sacrifice. If uh, perfection could have been attained through the Leviticus priesthood, why was there still need for another priest to come, one in the order of Melchizedek, not after the order of Aaron? And we read that in, in this chapter that we're studying, Hebrews 7, verse 11. You know, the title Abraham was uh, gave Melchizedek represents the offerings to Christ who has come as a high priest in the order of Melchizedek. Just as Abraham gave Melchizedek a tenth of everything when Melchizedek gave him a blessing with bread and wine, God's people in Christ gives a tenth to Christ because he has given us a blessing of eternal life with the bread and the wine of the Passover as the high priest in the order of Melchizedek. Well, we can conclude with this. The order of Aaron was a uh, division of priesthood in which the priest offered the blood sacrifice of animals to God while the order of Melchizedek in its division of priesthood in which the sacrifice of bread and wine is offered. You know, the saints in the early church 
were able to receive the perfect forgiveness of sins by believing in Christ, the high priest, in the order of Melchizedek, and by keeping the feast of the new covenant. However, after Jesus ascended into heaven and all the apostles died, Satan infiltrated the church and abolished all the feasts of the new covenant, the Passover of the new covenant, uh, the covenant uh, was abolished in about A.D. 325. The uh, abolition of the Passover was an act of abolishing the sacrifice itself, which Christ would offer according to the order of Melchizedek to give his people the blessings of eternal life with bread and wine. Therefore, since the sacrifice offerings according to the order of Melchizedek was abolished, no one has been able to receive the blessings of eternal life. Now, the world comes to an end, and at the end of time, who can be saved unless the high priest in the order of Melchizedek appears? So in these days, the high priest, the order of Melchizedek, had to come with bread and wine of the Passover, which is a sign of Melchizedek. Can you see that? I hope you do. Well, it says in Isaiah 25, 6 through 9, and these are very important verses, and we just finished studying that on our Wednesday Bible study. On the mount of the Lord Almighty will prepare a feast of rich food, for all people, a banquet of, of aged wine. He will swallow up death forever. In that day, they will say, surely this is our God. We trusted in him and he saved us. This is the Lord. Wow. What a way to end our uh, podcast with that uh, verse. So, uh, I hope you enjoyed uh, going through this uh, this chapter with me and going through this article. I thought it was well written, and uh, I I agree with uh, I agree with it. Uh, it's uh, kind of hard to imagine, but this was all in God's mind even before eternity, uh, even before the worlds began, back in eternity. Well. With that said, I'm going to end my podcast. I know it was a little bit longer than usual, but we covered a lot. And remember that God is out here, and you can find him in your Bible. So just open it up and look for him. With that said, I'm going to end my podcast. I hope you enjoyed this. Uh, and until uh, next time, bye for now.